Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial focusing on how to take off on a short runway in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. If you're new to the channel then please click that subscribe button down below and if you found this video useful please give us a like as well. As you can see we're currently sat in my Airbus A320neo with a bespoke livery at the hold point for runway 01 at Skiathos Airport in Greece with its notoriously short runway. Of note, if you've seen my Skiathos VOR tutorial video as well, you'll know that it's got an interesting approach to it as well, using a VOR station positioned on another island, and we will be using that again today to depart. We're configured for a full flight from Skiathos back to London Heathrow Airport, and therefore we're full of fuel and quite heavy. We need to take this into account when working out our performance for taking off, as we might need to use toga mode instead of flex to take off. If we look at the charts then we can see that the runway has a total length of just over 1600 meters but that is the total length of the runway. The usable length however is nearer to 1500 meters so it's over two-thirds shorter than the runway at Gatwick Airport so it doesn't give us much room to play with here. So we will take off and fly the Avico 1 Bravo departure and using the Navigraph charts to help us show it in a bit of a clearer way, we're going to depart north, flying the runway heading to 2,000 feet with a max speed of 210 knots, turning right back to fly towards that Scopulos VOR that we arrived and used during the arrival procedure. And at this point we have to be at or above 6,000 feet. We're then going to continue with another right turn to head back over Skiathos Airport itself before heading west to the waypoint named Avico, where we have to be above flight level 90 and then we'll continue our journey back to Heathrow. Now using all of this information we're going to have to configure our aircraft accordingly and if you've got a performance calculator that you like to use then go ahead and get all of that ready with your data. So as we mentioned before we're sat at the hold point Alpha 3 at runway 01 at Skiathos and we've got our takeoff checklist almost ready to go. So we go takeoff max, uh, cabin check, spoilers armed, flaps to takeoff setting, and configure test. So, how do we decide what we're going to use for departure? Now, I've configured for flaps 3 with a flex 2 temp of 61 degrees. And to recycle the V speeds, you just go ahead and click the buttons situated next to those parts of the MCDU and they'll recycle and recalculate your relevant V-speeds and you can see there our V1 and V-rotate 123 and 124 knots and our V2 speed of 128 knots. Now if we were to use flaps 2 for example we would have to then recycle the V-speeds again to get new speed figures. We need to of course make sure we've got in our RADNAV page that VOR frequency tuned in and the outbound course to help us as well navigate as we fly past Skopulos towards Avico. Although in an aircraft like this we could just leave it on managed heading mode most likely. And on our FCU we make sure we've got our speed restriction set as well to 210 knots so we don't overfly that speed restriction and go too quick for the turn. Now one thing I have to note is the flaps 3 setting for this short takeoff is most likely required but if we go ahead and select flaps 3 as we have done just now we let it settle if we go ahead and select takeoff configuration we will get a known bug with the A32NX and we'll get a master warning and an ECAM memo saying takeoff configuration is not correct so we can get around that by clearing the master warning. We have to select flaps 2, retest the takeoff configuration and it will accept that because it doesn't yet recognize flaps 3. I reported it a few months ago and uh, it's just a low priority so it is being worked on uh, but it's not a huge rush to get a fix for this. But it's something to be wary of. If of course you get to flaps 3 and you press takeoff configuration when you're watching this and it doesn't happen to you, you know it's been fixed. 
So we're all ready to go. At this point we don't press take off config again because it will give us the error again. If we're on VATSIM of course we'll call up so we're ready for departure, uh, the hold for runway 01 and we'll be told to backtrack. Strobes, lights, everything as required and then we head onto the runway. When I mentioned how heavy we are, we can see on our gross weight down here that we're 65,000 kilograms. So we are pretty heavy today and we'll likely use most of the runway for our departure. Flight director modes and all that sort of stuff on and our initial climb out level to 9,000 feet selected as our target altitude. And of course if we're setting that speed we make sure we press down to select it as a selected speed rather than managed. So down we go to the very end of the runway and it's quite a tight turn down at the very bottom here so the speed needs to come right off. and we want to use as much of the runway as we possibly can. And of course we'll have likely been told that we can take off, so we will likely have been told by the controller that we are cleared to take off. So we are managing that turn as tightly as we can. It's uh, both a short and a narrow runway at Skiathos. And after departure, if we're using VATSIM, we might actually be told to head direct to Avico, in which case we can then just turn left instead of overflying that Scopilos VOR, as has happened to me a couple of times on the network. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get that nose wheel straight before we do stop. And we go ahead and press that part brake. One thing that I will notice at this point, we'll get that bug that we looked at a minute ago displaying itself again when we set our takeoff thrust. We'll get our master warning and our takeoff configuration warning on the ECAM as well. But we just cancel the master warning and we carry on as normal and eventually that will be fixed. So to take off it's all the same process as before and of course we've got flaps 3 instead. Get the part brake off, use the brakes to your advantage to hold it on the tow brakes and bring that power up initially to about 50% and then release the brakes as you apply fr full thrust. And we're going to use toga today and you can see there's that master warning caution again appearing. So hurtling down the runway I'm going to select manual heading select as well to make sure the aircraft doesn't bug out on us. 100 knots V1, so we're committed to take off now, rotate, V2, positive rate, go up, we hit that F speed on the primary flight display so we can go ahead and bring flaps 3 down to 2, flaps 2 down to 1, and now we're going to target that S speed, and shortly we'll get lever climb as well as we climb out a little bit further. Of course if we're using toga we should have the chrono on as well, counting that 5 minute interval to make sure we don't to make sure we don't screw the engines up. And once we're over that initial acceleration altitude we can bring that into the climb gate for the throttle. Be careful of the aircraft because it might not fly this properly. We might have to intervene as we are doing so now. And we'll fly back round to that VOR. If you're wondering how to find the VOR, follow the white arrow. And if you're looking at the 
course out or inbound from the VOR, you follow the blue arrow. And this is Scopulos here, the VOR station is. Flap zero, so we can get rid of the arm spoilers, we can disarm those. And we're climbing away with that max speed in the turn as per the charts. Skiathos down in the distance there. If we're told direct to a VCO, then of course we'd go to that MCDU and we'd hit direct as before. And then we continue on our way round, flying whatever departure we've been assigned to fly. Short tutorial, but I hope it's covered uh, everything that you might want to know about this. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And likewise, if you've given it a go with a particularly heavy load, or if you've tried it with flaps too and so on, let me know how you've got on in the comments below too. Again, as always, if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button down below and check out all of my other tutorials, including the series on how to get started on VATSIM. Thank you all for watching, and I uh, hope you have a good day. See you soon.